Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 288 and it's that time again. <laughs> it's been three years since my last do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. So I am back with another do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine and I can't believe how much things have changed in that three years. Now, how this all started was in my store, I taught three classes. I taught myself, I taught three classes. I taught Be a Die Cut Diva, Be a Glitter Goddess, and Be a Stampin' Superstar. And those were the three classes that people could come in and I would, I would teach. And I taught one every uh, three months, one every four months. And so, I taught Be a Die Cut Diva four times a year and Be a Glitter Goddess four times a year. You get how it rolls? So, and, and the classes would sell out every time and it, it was an all day class. It is an all day class with me. It's not like two hours. It's like a six to seven hour class. We break for lunch because they are technique based classes, truly technique based classes. So I was doing those classes and then I started on YouTube and I thought, okay, well, I'll do a, I'll do a do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. And I remember the very first one I did, it was 45 minutes long. And I remember going, will anybody watch it? It's 45 minutes long. Oh my gosh, they're going to turn me off. Oh my gosh. You watched. <laughs> and then a few years later, I did the next do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine because again, new things had come out to the market from Sizzix to work with their machine. So I did it again. And this time you really watched, it has over 650,000 views on it. <laughs> That's a whole lot of Stacy, oh my gosh. And it's been about three years. So it's time to do another 2019 do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. And again, Things have changed so dramatically. There's new tools out, new techniques out, and things that I don't know if you know or not. <laughs> so this is my opportunity to really teach you. Honestly, this is a class. So you may have to chunk it up. You, you know, watch 15 minutes now and 15 minutes later. You will want to take notes. So I'm going to pause myself. This is my pause face. Okay, go get a piece of paper because <laughs> you're going to want to take notes. You're also going to want to write down YouTube number 288, the do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot Machine so you can refer back to it. Is this YouTube sponsored or paid for by anybody? Nope, <laughs> this is all mine, which means I can say anything I want about any of the product that's in front of me because I'm not affiliated, I'm not sponsored, I'm not endorsed, I'm not anything. I'm just me with my own opinions and my own thoughts and my own way of doing things. Does that mean that I'm going to use the Sizzix product perhaps in the exact way they had intended you to use it? Well, again, this is me. <laughs> so, <laughs> You have to know that these are my ways of using things and how I think they should be used and whether I think you need them or not, um, which is the beautiful thing of not being licensed or endorsed or affiliated with. I get to say what I want any way I want it because the only person that I'm responsible to is me, my family, and my staff. <laughs> All right, so I've got a really great YouTube for you today and we are going to start at the very beginning. We're gonna start simple and, and we're gonna progressively work our way through the different tools that Sizzix has come out with for their machine, which is probably one of the reasons I use their machine more than anybody else's. Love the Spellbinders Platinum 6 because it folds, love that. But the Sizzix Big Shot machine has been around longer than probably dirt. <laughs> Truly, Ellison has been a company doing dyes for gosh, I don't know, 80 years or something crazy like that. And, and they do them well, and their machine is made well. It is a workhorse of a machine. 
There's no question about it. It's a it's an energizer bunny. It just keeps going and going and going. Does this mean that there's not other machines on the market that you can buy and try and use? Of course there's other machines on the market. Absolutely. And and I do like the Platinum 6 machine a lot because it folds up and it allows you to do almost everything I'm going to do today. Some of the other machines will only do certain types of dies, which to me is limiting because I want to do everything. So, so that's one of the reasons why we really gravitate towards the Sizzix Big Shot machine or the Spellbinders Platinum machine because they will allow you to do everything. Now, did you know that a Sizzix Big Kick machine and a Sizzix Big Shot machine are the exact same machines? Yes. If you have a Sizzix Big Kick machine, that means you probably bought it from a box store like Michael's or Joann's. But if you have a Sizzix Big Shot machine, then you probably bought it from somebody like me, an independent mom and pop shop. And that's how Sizzix kind of separated them a little bit. They sent the Big Kicks to the big box stores and they sent the Big Shots to the independent retailers. Now, Big Shots have come and gone in color like you can't believe. There was the pink and black one. There was the turquoisey one with all the, like the, ta the scrollies over it. Uh, we've got the white and gray one now. There was an Ellison machine. It was an Ellison machine and it was a teal, uh, a bluey, a darker bluey color. All of these machines, there's the Big Kick, which was red and white. All of these machines are going to work the same. Everything I show you, I even think my, was there a, was there a Hello Kitty machine? I don't know why I'm thinking that. I know there were Hello Kitty dies, but for some reason I'm thinking there was a Hello Kitty machine. Could be wrong, could be wrong, but that's how long I've been, I've been working and, and playing with Sizzix products. <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't matter what machine you have. If it's a Sizzix machine that rolls or you press a button, then you're going to be able to do everything that I'm going to be able to do today. I have an express machine with me and that is the Sizzix machine where you press the button and it goes zoop. You don't have to roll at all. I have one over here. I'll try and, and work with it a little bit. It's kind of heavy and it's I only have so much space. Um, I also have a plus machine over on this side. Again, kind of heavy. Uh, try to work with it a little bit, but I do have my Sizzix Big Shot machine. And I will try to let you know the differences when something is different, like a uh, precision base plate you don't use in a Sizzix Big Shot Plus machine. No, you don't need to. The pressure in that machine is different than a standard Sizzix machine. Maybe you didn't know that. Now you do. So we're going to start off keeping it simple and I'm going to work my way through all the tools that are in front of me to show you how best to get the most out of what you already own. Sure, you might have to pick up a tool or two, but if you already have the machine, well, you're, you're light years ahead. Now let's show you how to make the most of it. And if you were thinking about buying a, a, a die cutting machine, this will give you a very good comprehensive overview of what Sizzix has to offer. It may not be the, the machine you choose, but at least you'll go in with a firm understanding before you spend your cold hard cash. You'll understand what this machine can do and what it can't do and why it is that we use it more often. So again, I'm looking at my table and it's just filled with stuff. So this is the 2019 do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. And I hope that uh, I hope that you find it beneficial and useful and that it's a reference tool because that's what it is intended to be, a reference tool. Now there is a chance. I used to teach three classes. I used to at my store. I used to teach be a die cut diva, be a glitter goddess, and be a stampin' superstar three classes and I taught each class once a quarter. So my die cut diva I would teach four times a year. You could only take it with me four times a year and it was an all day class. I mean it really was an all day class. We broke for lunch and everything. But it really gave you 
an on-hands foundation of how to use the machine and the dies you probably already own. So there's a chance that I might come back and do an in-store class or two with Be A Die Cut Diva again. I haven't quite decided for sure yet, but I think I'm, I might, and it would have to be either a Saturday afternoon class or a Sunday class. I'm still kind of contemplating, um, but I know that there's lots of you out there that are local, that are closer. In California, I know people will drive to come take this class, and I'd be happy to teach you because I think that that gives you that hands-on experience and this is my way of offering it up to those of you who don't live local who are in another state or another country and that way you can take this youtube class and you can watch what i'm doing pause me grab your products your dies and your sizzix big shot machine or big kick machine or big shot plus machine or big shot express machine and do the same thing and go oh who knew and then start me again and run it to the next and then stop me and do what i just did so we do this together we're together in this and and as long as you know that i'm going to give you the, the the best information that i have that i know i think that i think you're going to find that your your brain is going to start going well i didn't and i oh, i could do it oh my gosh i've got ideas and that's the best thing about being creative is just having those ideas run through your head and getting that excitement to get crafty again so i have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about and that is from the last youtube which was 287 which was oh the yasumoto I called them everything under the sun. The only thing I didn't call them was Yoshinoya. <laughs> so, Yasumoto. Yes, Yasutomo. I'm still doing it wrong. Yasutomo. Oh, and thankfully, they're very nice people and they forgave me. Yasutomo pearlescent watercolors that were at a drop dead, unbelievable price for 24 colors. It was like $6. It was crazy, crazy. And even if you didn't get them on sale, they're only $8.10 and you will love, love, love them. Beautiful product. So these winners are gonna win the, the Yasu Tomo Pearlescent Colors. You're gonna win a Prima stencil and oh, a sticky grid sheet from Sizzix and a Ranger Mini Mister. Well, Wahoo could chew for you guys. Do you wanna know if you are our winner, winner chicken dinner? And if you didn't post on the last YouTube, there's no way you can be a winner, winner chicken dinner. So you gotta post a comment, which means you have to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit, hit, hit. All right, our first winner, winner is Kathy Hughes. Hello, Kathy, how are you doing today? That's you, do you see your name? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Okay, Kathy, wahoo. <laughs> but you're not alone. You have a friend. You have a friend in Sandy. Sandy Coggins? Sandy? Sandy Coggins. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. You're a winner chicken dinner. <laughs> All right, girls, how are you going to claim your prize? It's so easy. Go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Look for the link that says winner, winner, chicken dinner. Follow the directions and we will confirm that you are indeed our prize winner and then we'll get them off to you just as quickly as possible. This is going to be a good YouTube to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner on because it's all Sizzix tools. <laughs> Can't go wrong there, right? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to tilt down. We're going to get started for today. And again, please remember this is a class. It really is. It's here to teach you and to show you things that perhaps you haven't seen before or you forgot about. This machine is a really great machine. And if you're thinking about what to buy, well, watch the whole YouTube and then and then really explore and and make the best purchase for your die cutting machine that you can make for you you'll be happy once you start cutting i promise <laughs> okay i'm gonna tilt on down we're gonna get started for today bye down we go and let's zoom on in zoom on in i know i can almost feel ellison holding their breath 
What's she going to say? <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> All right. I think that's pretty good, right? So we have a make and take going on downstairs. This is it. Super cute. We actually are using memory box dies to use to do this, but there is a tool from Sizzix to go with your Big Shot machine that allows us to make this work and it's wonderful. We've got the Find It glitter paper smooth. So this is one of the make and takes, but if you didn't like that color combination, not to worry. We also have this one for you. Super cute, right? So this is what's going on downstairs right now. But we're here to talk about the Sizzix Big Shot Machine. So I'm going to pull it over and here it is. Sizzix Big Shot Machine has a handle on, whoa, on one side that allows you to roll it through. This is how it comes to you. You have a extended multi-purpose platform that has hinges on it that open and close to give you different shims to run different product through your machine. So this platform allows you to do wafer dies. It allows you to do sizzlets and embossing folders and um, cut and emboss and then the bottom one which really doesn't get used too much anymore was for their textured impression plates which they don't make anymore so this is what comes with it right now along with two sets of cutting pads now I want you to notice something and this is where not being paid licensed affiliated whatever comes in handy the cutting plates are smaller than the platform. Does Sizzix have dies actually this long? Yes, they do. And if you want to do a die that long, you need to have the cutting pads that long. But they wanted to keep the machine at a very specific price point. So the only way to do that was to give you the short plates, not the long ones. I didn't agree with it. I had holy smokes artichokes conversations like you would not believe because now if you want to do a longer die from them you do have to go out and buy the longer plates it is what it is and i want to say they're about twenty dollars i this machine retails for 119.99 we have it on a uh special block uh, special buy i think it's 79.99 is what the machine costs if we're going to ship it to you, there is a shipping fee. Even though it's over $50, you're still gonna pay shipping on it. But it retails for $119.99 and we have it for $79.99 and this is what you're going to get. Now in the future, and the future is coming sooner than later, they've changed things up and I don't even have a good example to show you but I'm gonna do the best I can. As opposed to having the hinged platform, they're going to go back to what is a base platform and a solo thin shim. So these two make up the same as this only without the tabs. Same idea, only this comes separate and you only need the two. Now they're not going to do it in the extended size either. They're going to go back to the standard size since about 90% of all dies fit a standard size platform. Here is the standard size platform. Can you see the difference in the, in the length? It's a little bit smaller but about 90% of all dies fit on the standard size platform. So coming later this year you're going to be receiving, if you buy a machine, you're going to be receiving the two platforms, the base and the shim. You're going to receive it in the standard size, which I think is, is a much better idea, I really do. And then you'd be also getting the standard size cutting pads, which would work perfectly because you're getting a standard size platform. Then if you buy larger dies, 
or you you want that extra space that having the extended platform gives you then it's up to you if you want to go out and purchase that I think the standard size platform is a much better idea I think that having the two um, shim the the base and the one shim is a great idea because truly even with the the standard size multi-purpose platform we really don't use this one anymore so what they've done is they've combined these two into one platform and then your top giving you only two to keep track of all right so this is our basic machine I'm going to take this out because these aren't available yet. That's not how it's being sold yet. And I'm going to bring over, back over my, my extended platform, which is the same as my small platform. This is sold separately. You get the long one. You have to buy the small one separately. I like the small one better. It's less cumbersome. And again, about 90% of dies fit on this. So for me, it's, it's, um, it's a must have. However, if you are budget minded, budget conscious, this is going to work just fine for you. I would rather see you get another tool or another die than get the smaller standard platform. It's $29.99. Think about how many dies you could buy with that $29.99. This is great for Mother's Day or your birthday or Christmas or Father's Day or whenever. This is a good gift for somebody to get you. This is a, ooh, that's nice to have as an extra. But if all you have is what came with the machine, you're going to be just fine, I promise. Now, we're going to go through some of the tools. Like I said, we're going to run through tools. I'm going to try and keep myself as organized as possible. And the first thing we're going to do is just start with a basic Sizzix die. I just want to show you a basic Sizzix die. So Sizzix started with steel rule dies. That's how they started. These are those really fat dies. And this is an old Ellison design one. This is a Sizzix one. Tim Holtz has them and they're brown. Now they come with a black. If it's a thick die like this, that runs through this machine differently than any other die because it is the die that does not need any of those platforms I just showed you. Inside these dies are actual uh, blades, blades uh, that are shaped to the shape of the die and put in there and then covered with foam so you can't hurt yourself. But if you were to step on this and put enough pressure on it, you just might find a little heart imprint on, on when you step on it. So they've covered up with foam so that when it rolls through the machine, the pressure from the roller here is going to compress that foam down and allow you to die cut. Okay, Stacy, I don't get what you're saying at all. Totally understand. Let's cut. So I'm going to grab just a piece of cardstock and I'm going to take two plates, two plates. Now, one of them is going to get cut into all the time. And one of them you'd like to keep as your do not cut plate, which means you try never to cut into this plate. That allows one plate to stay completely flat most often. You will find that the plate that you're constantly cutting into is eventually going to warp and you're going to want to turn it over and cut and then turn it over and cut and then turn it over and cut to keep that warpage down. But it is going to get cut into and it is going to warp and it is eventually going to crack and break and you will have to replace it. It's okay. They're not expensive. Honestly, they're not. Now I do something called a do not cut plate. This is, oh, this has been used. This is my glitter cutting pad, cutting plate from Sizzix that they did exclusively for me. It's my ruby red glitter cutting pad. And I know this one is always my do not cut plate. Sizzix also sells colored cutting pads. So if you had a coral one or a mint one or another, they have silver glitter and gold glitter, then you know that that's always your do not cut plate and you want to not cut into it as much as possible. 
If you accidentally do, is it okay? Yes, forgive yourself and move on. Honestly, it will be fine. You're just trying to keep it from looking like this. Now this is my cut plate and I want to cut into this until it just won't cut anymore. So your plates are not going to stay looking like this forever. The more you cut, the more they're going to change and that's okay. That just means you're having a great time with your machine. Now I've got my, my steel rule die is what these are called. I have got my cut plate. I've got my paper and I can put my die right down on it. And then I have got my do not cut plate, which is going to have no cuts in it. And I'm going to send this on through. You might hear some cracking, some, let's see. Oh, not so bad. Okay. Easy peasy. Not so bad. And let's see what we've got. So right out of it, my die cut these two pieces out of just basic cardstock. But a steel rule die is also different from any other die on the market because it does have blades. And you may see that steel rule dies cost more than a lot of other dies, and that's because the blades, the, uh, the labor to put those blades in there and bend them to the exact shape, it costs more. But then this die, this die can do more than other dies on the market. Your, your wafer dies or your thin dies. Let me see if I can cut. So I've got some paper here and I'm cutting me off a hunk. And let's see what we've got. I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five sheets of cardstock. You know what? I'm going to cut so that all the colors are different. I'll cut another hunk off of this one. So I've got five sheets of cardstock. Ooh, better cut a bigger piece. <laughs> I still think I cut them all about the same. Okay, five different colored card stocks. Put my card stock down. Put my die against my card stock. My do not cut plate. See how nice and flat it is? And I'm going to send it on through. No platform is needed. Oh. Roll, roll, roll. Now it's a little harder to roll through because I've really loaded it up. But let's see what we get. Okay, so it cut through all of those pieces of cardstock at one time. And I probably could have got away with another sheet or two. But here they all are. All with one roll. Really very easy to do. And that's the benefit of a steel rule die, is that it allows you to cut heavier material. So can I cut fabric with a steel rule die? Yes. Can I cut leather with a steel rule die? Yes. Can I cut um, acetate with a steel rule die? Yes. Can I cut um, a, a, a metal sheeting with a steel rule die? Yes. Can I cut cork with a steel rule die? Yes. All of these things will cut with a die like this. Unlike some of your other dies, your thinlets or your wafer dies, they can't cut through this type of heavy material 
because they don't have that blade inside. So that's the benefit of having a steel rule die. They can cost a little more money, but you're going to get a little bit more for that money, especially if you are quilting or fabric or uh, doing some type of mixed media. Can it cut through? Um, foam core. Yes, there's lots of things that can cut through. Through fun foam, absolutely. You, you can play and play and play and you will see how much that steel rule die will cut. So that's one of the, what do I do with all this stuff? Holy smokes artichokes. I'm going to end up having tons of this left. Will a steel rule die go through a Big Shot Plus machine? Absolutely. Will it go through an express machine? Absolutely. And you run it just exactly the way I did. Just run it on through with your two plates and you're good to go. Will there ever come a time where it won't cut? Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. Let's just take a good hunk of this. Okay, so I've got a good hunk of paper here, probably 15 sheets of paper there. And if I were to put my paper down, put my die down, and then send it on through, because I'm using a machine, a manual machine, and with your express machine, it will now stop, it will not take it. It's not gonna let me push. It's saying, Stacy, too thick. It just won't go. It's saying too thick. It wants to take it and what's happening is it's pushing that die out towards the back end because it's just too thick. I have too much paper there. That's one of the beautiful things of the machine is that if you try to overstuff it, if you have too much paper, if your material is too thick, if you have too many plates. I've seen people want to do accidentally because they don't know, because they, they, they forget that it's down there, a clear plate, a cut plate, their paper, their die, and their do not cut plate. And they try to send it on through and it just won't go. It's too, see it's, it's trying to, it's shooting my die out the back end. It won't take it. It just will not. That's your fell safe knowing that, okay, if it's making me force it, if it just is too thick, back it out and take out, well, in this case, take out one of the cutting pads because you, oops, accidentally forgot you had a cutting pad in there and take out some of your paper. And then you're right back to where you were, sending it straight on through and having it cut for you. Okay, easy peasy. Now let's move on to the next type of die, which is a sizzlets type of die. Now, I don't even know if they make sizzlets anymore, but you may own them and they kind of look like this, thin, not wafer thin, thin with some a gray foam on them. And they do have long ones, which is where having that extended platform is necessary to cut a die like that. But having the small plates doesn't help you. You need a plate that goes all the way to the end. So if you have long dies like this, you're going to want to get the extended cutting plates. Now, sizzlet dies um, are not as hardy as a steel rule die, meaning you can't cut lots and lots and lots and lots of sheets. It just won't work. At best, they're meant to cut one or two sheets of paper. So let's grab two sheets of paper and see what we get. I guess I can cut just the little one. Let's cut the flower. So two sheets of paper and let's see what we get. So I've got my do not cut plate down. I've got my paper down or I've got my cup plate, I'm sorry, my cup plate with all the yucky in it. 
my paper is down, my die is down, and my do not cut plates on the top. And then I'm rolling it through. But you can see, it's just going through with no roll in at all. My, I'm not turning it at all and it's just going through. That's because this is where having the multi-purpose platform comes in, whether it be the standard size or the extended size that comes with your machine. This is where you need it. Why? Well, because with a steel rule die, it's already thick. It's already at the right height to hit the roller in your machine, unlike a sizzlet die, which is thin and isn't thick enough to hit the roller in your machine. So it needs a little help. And the multi-purpose platform is what gives it help. Now, again, I showed you the multi-purpose platform has more than one tab, tab two, tab one, and then the base. The base we really don't use much at all, but if you were to turn to tab one, you would see that it shows you, ha, ah, look, it works with a sizzlet die. The thing to remember with the multi-purpose platform is that you only have three options. That's it, just three. Either that die, well, I guess four. All right, four. Either that die is going to work on the base tab, or if it doesn't work and it doesn't cut, it's too thin, you add another shim, or if it doesn't work, you add the top one, or you may not need the multi-purpose platform at all because you're using a steel rule die. So let's play. I'm gonna put my multi-purpose platform down and I've got it on tab two. My multi-purpose platform is completely closed. I've got my cut plate, I've got my paper, I've got my die, and my do not cut, and I'm gonna send it on through. And look at it's taking it, it's taking it, until it gets to that die. It rolls through here, because there's nothing here to say stop. But once I get to the die, the machine says, oh, ah, no, don't force it, don't. Do you see me trying to tug on this? I'm trying to get it into the camera. Do you see me trying to tug on this? Don't. That's the machine's way of saying, stop, back me up and try again. So this one is too tight with tab two. And remember, I showed you on tab one, this was the tab that said sizzlets. But I know me and maybe you too, <laughs> <laughs> and reading directions, oh, that's an optional thing. <laughs> that's, that's, well, maybe. <laughs> so now if I take my sandwich and I put my cup plate down and I put my paper down and I put my do not cut plate down and I send it on through. Oh, look at now it's taking it through. Look at that. And I could even roll it back if I just wanted to be certain that it cut. Back and forth is okay. Let's see what I got. Okay, cut through my first one beautifully. But not so much on the second one. My paper was too heavy. So sizzlets really are meant for one sheet of cardstock or two pieces of lighter weight paper. Cut through the one piece, absolutely beautiful. And that's a sizzlet. And sizzlets come in all, well, they used to come in all different sizes, smalls and mediums and larges. Now, if you have sizzlets and you use them a lot and the foam is starting to get pushed down into the actual die, how do you prevent that? packing tape. This is a commercial for Uline. <laughs> There's the Uline. Can you see the Uline? This is you. This is just packing tape that we use in our shipping room. I'm going to take a piece of this, tear it off, and right over the top of your gray, you're going to put your packing tape. 
right over the top of the design. And then you can either roll it around to the back or cut it off. Can you see the design now? And then I'm going to send it on through and I'm just going to cut it. Not with any paper. I'm just going to roll it on through so that it cuts into that packing tape. Send it on back. And now that foam is protected. It isn't, let's say I needed to cut 500 of this flower and I'm rolling it and rolling it, that foam is going to eventually compress down into the blade that is in there. So putting the packing tape on top of all of your sizzlets is going to save that from happening. Let's cut it one more time. So let me grab my piece of paper and I've got my multi-purpose platform open to tab one because that's where it says sizzlets. That's where it says sizzlets, and you only have four options. One being you use the platform completely closed, one being you open it up to tab one or the base plate, or you don't use the platform at all. You only have four. It's okay. If you have to try all four of them to figure out what's the right sandwich, it's okay. Let's roll it on through and roll it back just in case. And out I go. Easy peasy. Everything just pops right on out. And I save the wear and tear on the foam of my sizzlets. And again, sizzlets come in. This is a small one. This is a large one. Yes, that's a sizzlet die. And I would take my packing tape and I would maybe put it Oh, I'm not such a good packer. <laughs> Don't tell the shipping room I did that. <laughs> okay, so I might put it uh, this way. Oh, I really, oh, there we go. So I might need three or, you know, two or three. Boy, I'm really stinking at this. So if you get a beautifully packaged <laughs> shipment from us, you know it did not come from me, but I'm putting that tape on there so that it saves my foam. All right, should we try and cut it and see if it cuts? Even with that yucky, how well of a job I did? Why not? Can't hurt anything, right? Let's grab a piece of paper. Let's put my paper down. Let's put my sizzlet down. Have no idea what we're gonna get because that was a horrible job. And let's send it on through. Again, be on the right side of the right tab. You wanna make sure you're on the right tab. And let's roll, roll, roll. Okay, so far so good. And then roll, roll, roll back. Oh yeah. There we go. And I have saved my foam from getting squished into the actual design because then you have to pry your paper out and that's not fun. If the foam starts getting squished down, you truly then have to literally pry your paper out. So those of you who have done that know what I'm talking about and here's a way to save it so that you don't have to do that. And these are sizzlet dies. Easy to use, but you need to keep them with basic cardstock or thinner paper. All right, moving on. The next day I want to show you real quick is what's called a movers and shapers die. So this is a movers and shapers die. It's a thick die. So we're not going to need our multi-purpose platform, whether it be the extended or the regular size. We're not going to need this at all right now. 
Easy peasy, thick dye. You only need your cut plate and your do not cut plate. But this dye has this weird opening in it. Why? Well, this is a magnetic piece and Sissix sells little um, shapes that will fit inside here so that you could cut a shape out of this little tag. Very, very convenient, very cute. Tim Holtz did a lot of them. They're called movers and shapers dies. But this little piece comes with the die. This little piece right here, and it's got a little piece of magnet on one side, and it goes right there. Most people throw this little piece away. Don't throw this little piece away. There is a purpose to this. This little piece of foam, which is the same foam here, is slightly higher. It's a little bit thicker. It's not flush with the die. It stands up just a little bit higher. And there's a reason for that. Let's say you just love this shape and you don't plan to use it as a movers and shapers at all and you threw this piece away. What can happen is that when you cut this, the paper gets pushed in here and you can't get your paper out. I don't know if I can make that happen. I will try. I don't know if I can, but I will try. So paper, cut plate, cut, do not cut. Send it on through. Little creaks and cracks are okay. I guess we could roll it back and see if I can get it squished in there. Don't know if I'll get it squished or not. No, I didn't get it squished in there. But if I had, you then have to pry the die out. It's not a lot of fun, trust me. If it's the last piece of paper you have to finish the last something on your layout or your card and you're sitting there having to pry it, you're not going to be happy. So this little piece here that they've given you acts as like an injector. It's a little bit higher, so when it goes through the machine, it pushes down like the rest of the foam. But when it comes out of the machine, it pushes your paper up just a little bit, so you are able to get it out easier. Don't throw this away. Lots of people do, and if you did, I, I this is again, <laughs> love you, Sizzix. You could try and call them and see if they'd send you one if you threw yours away because you didn't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go this way. Do not cut plate on top, always a do not cut plate, and then roll it through. And then it just pops right out because this little piece here helped. Let it go pop and that's a nice help. But that's not all this die does. It's like, well, why did they put that magnetic piece in if there's not a reason? And remember, I told you they made something called little movers and shapers pieces, which is this. This will fit in there. And there's lots of different shapes, so you can do lots of different things, but this is going to cut this image inside of this tag. So I could put this down there, and let's grab another piece of paper so you see what I'm talking about. Again, thick, so I don't need to have my multi-purpose platform at all. Can I cut face up? Absolutely. Would you prefer to cut face up? If you'd prefer to cut face up, then your do not cut plate is going to go down on the bottom. Your die will be facing you. Your cuts will be facing you. The paper that you wanna see on your card or your layout will go against the die. And then your cut plate will be on top. Wherever that the, the die is facing to cut, that's the side your cut plate needs to go on. Your do not cut plate, you wanna have it as flat as possible. So let's send it on through. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this off so you can see. So this is where I'm at. 
and it's cut this little shape out, which is all cute on its own. But what it also did was cut that shape out of my tag. Now, this is not perhaps the best shape ever for a tag, but that's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to show you how movers and shapers work. Anytime you see a die from Sizzix that has an opening like this, means that it's a two for die. You can use it two ways. You get two for one. You can cut it just plain like we did the first time, which, let me see where I did with it. We can cut it just plain like I did the first time, or you can cut it with a um, an embellishment. And the thing is, the because you can move that anywhere you want, you can put that whether it be the package or one of their other movers and shapers, you can move it anywhere you want and it stays in place because it's magnetic. Now, can you use these on their own? Well, it's thick and you would think, oh, Stacy, it's thick, easy peasy, not a problem. I'll just take it and use it all by itself because I wanna use it all by itself. So let's grab a piece of paper and let's just do what we normally do. It's thick, right? So it shouldn't require anything more than my cut plate, my paper, my die, and my do not cut plate. And I should be able to just send it on through. Ha, huh. but I can't. It's not tall enough. It needs a base. It needs a base die to be able to use it. So, if you see one of these dies on sale somewhere, the tag, Tim Holtz tag is the best one because you want a space with the most opportunity to cut. Just because you have this die doesn't always mean you have to use it to cut something out of the main die. Huh? What did she just say? What if all, what if I accidentally bought this or I just wanted to use this all by itself? and I had it in my movers and shapers, but I didn't like these two together. This does not work for me. But I wanted to cut a bunch of those little packages. As long as you have one die that, that has a movers and shapers option that this will fit into, you're gonna be golden. Because all I have to do is take my paper, cut my paper. I don't care about the rest of the die. I don't care about that tag. I don't care about any of it. All I want is that package. That's all I want. So I'm gonna do this this way. Put my do not cut plate down, my die faced up so I can see what I'm cutting, my cut plate, and I'm gonna send it on through. And now I've cut my little package. And that's all I cared about anyway. So if you have these little dies, but you don't know how to make them work because you don't have one of these, find a die like this on sale. And again, it's gotta be thick. The Tim Holtz tag is the best because it gives you the most workings area. The opening to put these dies is huge and then you can use them. However, I will tell you, Ellison Sizzix does make something called a Movers and Shapers shuttle. And what this is, is a magnetic plate that this will sit on top of, and now you've got the same height without having to have a die. This together equals this. Can you buy this? Yes. Will I sell it to you? Yes. Do I want to sell it to you? No. No. Go find a die that has the opening because then you get the die and you get an opportunity to play with the movers and shapers, even if all you want to do is just cut out that little shape. Your, that's all you wanted was that little shape. If you buy the shuttle, which is fine, but this doesn't do anything more than allow you to cut this. Wouldn't you, and it's 20 bucks, I think it's 20 bucks. Wouldn't you rather spend 20 bucks on a die that gives you a whole nother shape that you can do something with and the function of that? 
Yes, this is where eyes are rolling at Sizzix. <laughs> That's okay. Remember, y'all love me, right? <laughs> so, I mean, yes, you, you absolutely can get this without question. But if you're able to find a die that, ha that has the opening and you like the shape of it, then, then you're getting a twofer. So, those are basic Sizzix dies. Now we get into a little bit more. A little bit more. How about we talk about, oh, let's talk about precision base plates. Yes, let's talk about precision base plates next. All right, precision base plates, what are they? Precision base plates were made by Sizzix. There's, there was three. Here was the first one that came out. Precision base plate, meant to cut intricate dies. Intricate wafer dies, thin dies, not sizzlets, not steel rule dies, but super thin dies. This is a memory box die. See how thin that is? This is a, this is one of my dies, a simply defined die. See how thin that is? These, this one was made, this tool was made when you have those really intricate dies that you're having to roll forward and backwards and forwards and backwards because they're not cutting out, they're so intricate. This allowed you to cut them without any problem. And this was version one, and there's nothing wrong with version one. If you have this one, stick with it. The problem is it got little rust stains, little rust stains, especially in humid weather. And people didn't like the little rust stains. So, says, and there's nothing wrong, you just take a uh, um, polish, pledge polish and wipe it off and the rust stains will come off. Then Sizzix came out with version number two, which covered this top piece of metal with a coating so that it didn't rust. But then it left all of these lines which again, doesn't cause it any harm at all. In fact, you can wipe some, of the, all this is is little bits of paper left in it. You can wipe some of this off with a wet wipey and get it and scrub it and get it off and then it looks fine again. But both of these work well. So if you already have this one or this one, you're good. But people didn't like that it left little lines. It caused a little bit of an issue. So then they came out with their latest version and I think their last one. Oh, you can see the camera. <laughs> this is the Chrome. So this top is so hard. First, it doesn't rust. Second, it's so hard it can't cut into. This is the latest precision base plate and it is the Chrome version. You have version one, version two, version three. As long as you've got one of these, yay! This is the one we now carry because it's the one that they now sell. We don't have these anymore because they went by the wayside of this one. But if you have this and it's still working for you, do you need to have this? No, you only need it if you really, really want it. But again, I wouldn't buy it until there's a reason to. This is $24.99. I'd rather see you get dies something to play with if you already have something that's going to work. How do these work? Okay, precision base plates. I'm gonna grab a die of mine. Die of mine. And this is a pretty intricate little die. You can see that it's intricate. See all those lines and all of this up here? If I try to cut this without a precision base plate, I'm gonna be rolling front and back and turning and moving and rotating and all sorts of things and it's still not gonna cut. The precision base plate allows the die to cut into the hardness of the, of the, of the chrome, giving you a beautiful cut. Will it wear the blades down? If you're going to cut a thousand of them, I would think at some point, yeah, it's going to wear them down. Are you going to cut a thousand of these or are you going to cut a hundred of these? Or are you going to cut 50 of these? Within reason, you're going to be just fine. You cut a thousand of them, maybe, but you're going to cut a couple hundred, you go girl or guy and just have at it and let it cut. So I'm going to take my thin die See, thin die, and I'm going to bring back over my multi-purpose platform. 
because this is not thick. This is not as thick as a steel rule die. This is a thin die. So I have to make it thick enough for it to hit the roller inside my machine. It's also a wafer die. And if you look at your multi-purpose platform, whether the extended or the small, it's gonna tell you wafer dies. Yay, keep the platform completely closed. Now for normal wafer dies, I would just put my, ooh, that's pretty, no, not gonna use that. I would use my cut plate. Here's my die, basic oval. Let's grab a piece of paper. Oh, I dropped a sample, can't do that. Let's just grab a piece of paper. Basic oval shape. Multi-purpose platform completely closed, cut plate, paper, and then do not cut plate and send it on through. And this is not an intricate die. This oval is easy peasy. I call it an open frame die. I don't know where I got that name from, but I call it an open frame die because the die itself is very open. Look at that. Ta-da! Easy peasy. There's nothing intricate in the inside. It's just a frame die, unlike this one that has lots of detail on the inside. This one's just an open frame die. You can stick your fingers through it, which means you don't need a precision base plate for an open frame die. In fact, you don't want to use a precision base plate with an open frame die. Why? because it has no structure in the middle like this die does. This die's got all of this metal here as structure. And when I put this through with a precision base plate, I'll see if I can get it to warp, I'll try. I don't know if I can get it to warp. So put my precision base plate down. It acts as your bottom cutting pad. Let's put my paper down and my die and I'm gonna send it on through. Because the pressure is so much more with the precision base plate and because this has no structure in between the oval, there's nothing in the middle of that oval, it's just an open die, it can warp your die. Gosh, I don't think it's gonna warp. No, it looks, well, no, it looks pretty good. but. Ultimately, what will happen is your die will start to warp like this. It'll start to bend. Is that bad for the die? No, you can tweak it back and bend it back into place. But if you use a precision base plate on a regular basis with what I call an open frame die, any kind of a frame that has no metal in the middle to hold that structure into one place, you want to stay away from a precision base plate. Now, what the precision base plate is meant to do is work with these more difficult dies that have a lot of detail. And that's the ones we love. We love, love, love the ones with all the detail. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna send it on through. I've got my multi-purpose platform completely closed. My precision base plate acting as my bottom cut plate. So I'm not gonna need to use this at all. My precision base plate has taken the place of that. My die and my do not cut plate. And I'm gonna send it on through. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a rotate and those little creaks and cracks are okay. Oh, I guess I'm not, it already cut. Oh, <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna give it a rotate, but you can see that everything is just falling on out. And that's what you want. That's what a precision base plate does. You want all of those little bits and pieces to just come right on out. That's the beauty of a precision base plate. To have that happen, 
you need one of these. It's an important tool to have. This one, if you do any kind of precision cutting, this isn't really a want tool. This is a need tool. You need this tool. I told you some, like this one, this one's a want. You don't need this one because you already have the extended one that came with your machine. But this, if you're doing intricate dies, you need this tool. Now, can I use this tool with a express machine? My understanding is yes, you can. Can you use this tool with a plus machine? No, you can't. The plus machine's pressure, because it's a bigger machine, it's an eight inch machine, is different than the six inch machine. And when you use this in an eight inch machine, the Sizzix Plus machine, it's too much pressure. I know, who would have thunk, right? Now, I, eventually I'll pull up the express machine. At some point, I'll get it over here. <laughs> I promise, at some point. Um, but this will just go right on through and cut beautifully. Boy, I made a mess over here. Let me see if I can just get some of this up super quick. Hello, Mr. SMS's floor. Remember, you love me too. All right. So with a, with a die that's very intricate, a wafer die, multi-purpose platform completely closed, precision base plate as your bottom plate, paper, die, do not cut plate, and send it on through. Oh, there we go. Cracks and creaks. That's what we want to, if you hear cracks and creaks, it's, oh, it's okay. That's all right. It's fine. Let's see if I can rotate this one or if it cut through the first time too. So often what I will do is rotate my die a quarter turn. Why do I do that? Because, or even a 180 degree turn, because Going back and forth and back and forth, the rollers are gonna hit. So I put it through this way. If I just keep running it back and forth and back and forth this way, the rollers are hitting the die in the exact same way it did every single time. So if it didn't cut the first time, it's not necessarily gonna cut the second time. But if you just rotate your die, a 90 degree, 180 degree, now the roller is gonna hit the die differently. This side was originally over on here and vice versa. So now it gives the roller an opportunity to try and cut the die one more time because every die cutting machine's got its own sweet spot. Creaks and cracks are good. Send it on through, wahoo. And again, this time I'm gonna do it off of, <laughs> that way it's all on the floor. Done. Beautiful and easy. And if you've been fighting with your dies, wave the white flag, <laughs> let it go, and just get yourself a precision base plate. This is not a want, this is a need. All right, so that's what precision base plates are, and those are the three different types of precision base plates. Now, we're going to move on. So now I've got another wafer die. I'm not going to use my precision base plate because it is not an intricate die. But this time I have um, a Mary from Memory Box, and for this YouTube, I have several memory box dies on sale at 50% off or more. So if you're not into Sizzix Big Shots, well, we've got memory box dies for you. Now, if you're watching this in 2020, chances are the dies are all, all gone. The information is still good, but the dies itself are sold out. So this die here says Mary. And I'm gonna bring over this time another tool from Sizzix, which is the magnetic platform. Again, 
for me, this is not a must have, this is a want. What does it do? It holds your die in place. So it doesn't move. It is a magnetic platform made only for wafer dies and it will hold your die in place. Why do you want that? Well, if you're stamping, if you've stamped something and you need to line something up, you it's nice to have the die not move. No more tape, no more washi tape, post-it notes, or if you want to die cut a very specific part of the paper. Again, you're able to put it there and it does not move. Now Ellison has something called um, release sheets. And I know many of you have talked about dryer sheets and um, uh, wax paper. We even used wax paper. But the thing with the wax paper is sometimes after enough times it will leave a buildup in the die. And we want to avoid that. This is a release sheet similar to wax paper that will take a die. Do you see how fine line those are that die cut is? It's very, very fine. So without using any type of release sheet or your dryer sheets or whatever you're using, it can be hard to poke that die out and pull it out because the lines are so very, very fine. Can you see how fine that the end of the Y is? pulling that thin piece of paper out. So Sizzix came out with their own release sheets and they're very, very easy to use um, and it will help the dye, the paper kind of pop right on out without having a waxy buildup on your dye from wax paper. The release sheet goes, so you've got your, your paper, your release sheet with the with the shiny side up because there's two sides, see dull, shiny, shiny side up, and then your die. So that release paper is in between the your finished paper that you wanna see on your card or your layout or your project and the release sheet. So in between, sandwiched in between. I'm gonna use my magnetic platform because I've got it there and that way I can keep it exactly where I want. And my do not cut, and I'm gonna send it on through. And again, up to you if you want to go forward and back or just forward. The older your machine is, or the longer, I guess it's more the longer you've used your machine. The more you've used your machine, the looser your machine is. So some of you may be able to just go through, did I go all the way to the end? I didn't hear it go all the way to the end. Yes, I did. Okay, some of you may have a brand new machine, so you may not have to go back and forth or turn it or rotate it. But others of you may have a pink and black machine that you've had for years and years and years. And it's just not cutting as well as it used to. Then you may want to do your rotating and going back and forth. Your machine got a little loose and that happens when you use your machine often. Oh, see how that just popped right off? and then this just comes right out. That would not happen <laughs> if it didn't have the release sheet. That would not happen. And then you can just pull the release sheet off the back. Let's see if I can get my tweezers. Pull the release sheet off the back and then you have Mary actually twice, one in release sheet and one regular. What would normally happen is that my paper, my paper would still be in here, in the die, if I didn't use a release sheet. So my paper would be in my die, and then I would turn it over, and Memory Box has given me little pokey holes to try and poke that paper out so I can pull it out. But you can see how easy with the release sheet it just falls out and it is a very, um, it's a very fine die. Now my little pieces still can pop out. I can pop out the little E and the middle there and the Y so that all my little pieces are out. And now I've got a beautiful die that says Mary. 
very fine, very delicate, much easier to get out when you're using a release sheet. And I just, and if you don't want to have, you don't have a magnetic platform, not a problem. Easy peasy. Multi-purpose platform. Cut my, my cut plate, my paper, my release sheet with the shiny facing me, my die, and then my do not cut plate and send it on through. Let's see if I just go through once what happens. Just once. Let's see what we get. And you're like, oh, but where's the purple? It's on the other side. All I have to do is then separate my release sheet from my die and done. So it's a very good value. You get quite a few sheets. And easy. Now, this is what I've got left. I would still use this for the same word. I, even if I only had my release sheet on part of it to help me get it started. Okay. So if you've got it on the M, but not on the Y, at least you've got a place for it to start to release, then you can pull it off. I would use every last square inch of this. If my die was only halfway on and halfway off, I'd still use it. I'd use it till there was nothing left. And I think you get 25 sheets of it. And I think it's 4.99 or something like that. So well worth the money to save you frustration without question definitely worth it for the frustration factor and those are release sheets next tool i want to show you is something that i don't know if many of you have seen it's been around for a long time i'm gonna i know the girls are gonna get crazy i threw it away Shh. okay next tool i want to show you has been around for quite some time and it looks like this. Well, we've been cutting into it. What is this? Well, this is the same as this. Cutting pad, which is the same as the one I've been using that looks horrible. New, beautiful, ooh, ah, cutting pad. Happily loved and very used cutting pad. And this thing that's got this crease in the middle of it. What does this do? Well, let's play. I'm going to grab another one of my memory box dies. Oh, and they didn't clean it out for me. And Sizzix has a tool to do that. I'm gonna pop these bad boys out really quick because they've been using them downstairs to make samples. So this is a memory box die that retails for $18. We've got it for half price. I know memory box at half price, are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. So we put some of our memory box dies on half price. Wahoo, okay, I think that's pretty good, pretty clean. Close enough? All right. Gosh, I keep missing that one. All right, so I've got a memory box die. Wafer die, thin, 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 and I'm gonna cut it. Now, it's not overly intricate because the heart shapes are pretty easy. So let me grab a piece of paper and let's cut some of my heart shape out. So I'm going to start with my cut plate, my paper, my die, my do not cut plate, and I'm going to send it on through. Send it on through. 
And now I can rotate it if I want to be sure. I can do a 90 degree rotate and send it back. Doesn't hurt it at all. Just a little extra insurance policy. Now I didn't use my release, so I'm gonna have to take it and pull. But because this has got a little more stability than that fine word Mary, I wouldn't use the release on this. I wouldn't. I wish I had my little brush, my little foam brush to pop all of these out, but that's okay. So there it is all cut out. Super cute, right? Let's find a piece of super cute. And it's what we made our samples out of for the make and take. But I cut the die entirely out, which is how Memory Box had intended it. What if I wanted to do something different? That is where the dimensional plate. Let's find just a basic piece of paper. That's where the dimensional plate comes in. It's a cutting pad that has this dip in it. It dips in, kind of this groove in it. And what that does is pretty unique and different and nobody else makes any plate like it. And it adds another element to your die that you didn't have before. Because right now, if we use this die just as it's intended, we're always going to get this. It's always going to cut out. But if we take, we bring our machine back over and we use this as our bottom cutting plate. Bottom cutting plate, then my paper, and I'm gonna cut my paper down just a little bit. So I can see my grooves. I can see a groove here and a groove there. And then my die, and I'm not even gonna clean it all the way out. Here's the center of my die. I'm going to put the center of my die where that groove is. I'm gonna line it right up to that groove. So I can see my groove here all the way down, and the center of my die is in that groove. What it's going to do is it's going to make sure that that groove, where that groove is, this die is not going to cut at all. Because of the groove, because it dips down, the roller is not going to hit the pressure. It's not going to hit that die and apply that pressure to cut out. So it's not going to cut the die where that groove is. Huh? I know. Okay, hold on. I'm getting there. So I'm going to center it. Make sure I'm on my groove. That looks pretty good. And my do not cut plate, and I'm gonna send it on through. No, don't rotate. Send it on through. And I'm gonna go once, and then I can come back. I'm not going to rotate because I don't want to accidentally mess up my groove. And let's see what we have. So you can see that it's cut everything over here and it's cut everything over there. But can you see where that groove is? It did not cut the die through. You did not get this. What you have is this and it's so cute i know right okay your mind is going psh, psh, right sound effects required <laughs> can you imagine with your butterflies and your dragonflies and but the hearts are so cute and that is how we made this card was using this amazing pad. 
amazing and inexpensive. Oh my gosh, it's I, I can't even remember how much it is, but it doesn't cost much. And you can use it again and again and again. And it allows you to take your dies and add another element to them. How cute, right? So now your butterflies literally can be flying off the pages. Your hearts can literally be flying off the pages without having to cut them all the way out. Totally different dimension, totally different element. I'm going to do this heart really quick so you can see it. I have got stuff everywhere. Holy smokes, artichokes. All right, so let's do this one. Let me grab another sheet of paper. And let's do this one out of this color here. Let me cut myself off a, a bit. Okay, where did I put it? Not there, not there, not there. All right, do you see it? Oh, here it is. Thank you, appreciate it. Found it. <laughs> Okay, bring my Big Shot machine right back on over. Multi-purpose platform, completely closed. My, what are they calling it? A dimensional cutting pad. Down. My paper, so I can see where my grooves are. My paper needs to be a little bit smaller, so I can see where my grooves are. Place my die so that the center of my die aligns with that groove. And that means it's not going to cut there. Put my do not cut plate back on and go. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. So you can see where it's cut. And you can see in the groove where it hasn't. And now I can take that outside of that die. Come on, down we go. There we go. And pop it up. Ooh, that's a little harsh on the yellow. <laughs> a little harsh. How cool is that? And we're doing it with hearts. Like I said, imagine anything you want that you just want the dimension to come up and out. I don't know if they're $6.99 or $5.99 or $8.99, but I think it is also a must have because it takes your dies that you already own and gives you a new opportunity to play with them in a way that you didn't have before. Very, very cool. And the girls did the most beautiful samples. Oh, here's a sample with it. Come on, pop up. The girls did the most beautiful samples using them. Truly, they did. So that is a dimensional plate to be used with wafer dies to allow your die to cut into but not cut all the way out of so that you can then 3D it or 2D it. Very, very, very cool. Okay, on to the next thing. Quickly, diffusers. What's a diffuser? First off, I want to tell you these are being discontinued. We have all that's left. We bought all that there is. So if you love, love, love what I'm going to show you, you're going to want to get them. This is set number two, Tim Holtz diffusers. Set number one is going forward, so you don't have to worry about that. But set number two is being discontinued. What are diffusers? Well, here is a, an embossing folder. How do we use an embossing folder? Let me show you. Grab a piece of my chocolate cardstock. Oh, got one right here, ready to go. Chocolate cardstock, cut it down. Embossing folder. Put it into 
my embossing folder. Embossing folders are plastic. They're molded plastic that last forever like your dies do. Most manufacturers put their name on the front of your embossing folder. So if I wanted the front of my embossed image to be this color, I would want to see that through where the name is. I'm using my chocolate paper, which has a sanding ability, so I'm gonna do it this way. Then I'm going to bring over my machine multi-purpose platform only tab number one where it shows embossing folders remember you only have four options if I tried to do it on the multi-purpose platform completely closed and I tried to send it on through it would go no 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 won't work it will not take it it just says no. Back it up. Open your next tab. Try it there. Send it on through. Oh, yes. Look at how nice that is. Easy peasy. Yes. And if it didn't work on this tab, I could open it up to my very bottom tab and try it there. Maybe you're using a piece of cardstock that's extra thick. You might have to open it to your bottom tab and try to send it on through. You just don't know. But you only have three options. One, two, three, unless you don't need to use this at all because you're using a steel rule die. So don't be intimidated by the machines. You, they're going to work for you beautifully. Look at how lovely that is. That's an embossing takes paper and makes it gorgeous. Easy peasy, fast. One of the easiest, fastest ways to craft is to use an embossing folder. But I used my chocolate paper, which means when I sand this, that coral color is gonna come through. I am the only one to have paper like this. I have it in black magic and in chocolate. So coordinations used to make this. They discontinued it. I flew to Hong Kong found out who made it, and bought it because I love it so much. It brings out the detail of your embossing. Rockstar. But we want to use a diffuser today. What does a diffuser do? I think diffusers started on Split Coast Stampers years ago and they took balsa wood, like little frames of balsa wood. And it's very, very similar to the dimensional plate that I showed you. Remember, the dimensional plate has a void here. So when it goes through the roller, it doesn't, it doesn't cut here because it, it's not thick enough to hit that roller and make that cut. Same with the diffuser. A diffuser, when used with an embossing folder, is going to add pressure everywhere except for where the opening is allowing no embossing there. Why would you want that? Well, maybe you want to stamp a sentiment in there, or maybe you want to put a picture in there, or maybe you want to layer something in there. I don't know. But Tim has two different sets of the diffusers, and set number two has this shield here and two, a rectangle and a square. These are being discontinued. So these are the ones in set number two. If you think you want diffusers, now's the time. Set number one has ovals, two ovals and a round. Now let's use it, let's show you. All right, so again, now I'm using an embossing folder. Embossing folders say, open me to tab one. And I'm gonna use my well, I can use my do not cut plate because this is not going to cut into it and I want a nice flat surface. So embossing folders, being that they're made out of plastic, they don't cut into anything. It's a flat surface. So I can put my do not cut plate or my cut plate down. Let's grab a piece of paper and my scissors. Very impressed that I haven't lost my scissors yet.
Okay, put it in. Now instead of another my do not cup or my cup plater, I'm gonna use the diffuser as my top plate, leaving this huge opening here. And I'm gonna send it on through. And I'm gonna roll, roll, roll. Now it might take a little bit of effort to get it going because it needs to, it kind of goes ah uh, and then takes it. Same at the end. You might hear a little ah. Uh. Oh, not too bad. And one roll is more than enough. So that's where I'm at. But when I open it, you can see it's embossed everywhere else, all the way around, but it's completely empty here, which means you have a flat surface to stamp on or to embellish. Let me do it in, you can see the difference between the two. So all over embossing and this one's got a flat surface. Let me do it in my paper. This time I'll do it in chocolate so, or in the magic so you can see the difference. So magic paper, as opposed to having a brown top, all the sheets have a black top. And let's cut down to size. Put it in. Put my diffuser on top. Remember, I'm on tab number one. I've got my do not cut plate down because my embossing folder is not going to cut into it. I'm going to use my diffuser as my top plate and I'm going to send it through. And a little bit of a uh, and then it'll take it. One roll is more than enough. And where that opening is, it's not going to emboss. And you can see. So you can imagine having the rectangle or the square having an opportunity to emboss all the way around but leave your center open gives you more to do with all the embossing folders you already own. You already have them. This is a tool to use with your Big Shot machine to give you another element to it, the next step with it, another opportunity so that you can do just plain embossing, you can use your diffusers, you have options. And I think that's one of the reasons I like Ellison, the Big Shot, and, and Sizzix so much is that they try to come out with tools that really give you options. Okay, diffusers, easy to use. Easy to use. Sold in a, pa a pack of three. You get three different diffusers. So here's, here's set number one, and you get the three different diffusers. And then set number two, which also gives you the three different diffusers. All right, moving on. And this time, we're going to take something that you wouldn't normally buy because you wouldn't think that you need it. These are mini cutting pla plates, mini ones, maybe for your sidekick machine, okay? I'm not gonna use them with my sidekick machine. I'm gonna use them with my Big Shot machine. I'm gonna use them with my Big Shot machine. What am I gonna do with them? I'm gonna use them to help decorate an envelope. You have an envelope. You want to add some detail to it, but you can't die cut 
Well, you can't die cut because if you do, what's going to happen? Oh, see, it's not going. Why is it not going? It's not going to cut anything. Why? Because I need to close my multi-purpose platform. I'm using a wafer die. I need to close my tab. See, it didn't cut anything. It wasn't, wasn't um, high enough to hit the roller in the machine. Okay, so if I do that, and I do this, and I'm working with an envelope, and I want to add some detail to my envelope. Well, I certainly did add detail. I cut all the way through it. So how am I going to avoid that if I wanted to do something super cute to my envelopes? That's where these little mini cutting pads come from. Who would have thought if I take my little mini cutting pad and I put it inside my envelope? Ha, 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 ha. I can even close my envelope. And then I make sure that my die is on my cutting pad. Now, I don't need that bottom cutting pad. See, if I put my do not cut on top and try and send it on through, it's gonna take it, it's gonna take it until it says no. Why? Because I've put my cutting pad in my envelope, which means I don't need my bottom one at all. Put it right down onto my platform, line it right up. You don't have to worry that it's going to cut into your multi-purpose platform because your cutting plate is right there. So make sure I've got it. Well, that's pretty good. And send it on through. Now I've cut the oval out of the front of my envelope, but not out of my, the back of my envelope. And you're like, but why would you want to do that? I don't know. Maybe you want to put a beautiful piece of paper in there and put it into your envelope and, and, and put their name and address on something like that to make it a little bit more. Maybe you want to just add a detail to an envelope as opposed to cutting the whole thing out. And you're like, huh? I know, I know, I'm getting there. Hold on. Uh, let's see. What if I used, what if I used, ooh, let's see if I can get this one to fit. All right, let's try. So this time I'm gonna use a die that doesn't cut out the oval, but cuts the dots in. This is one of my must-haves, meaning it's a simply defined die called must-haves. It's my must-have ovals. Let's put my cutting plate on in. You can't use these plates. They're too big. Even if you did it this way, they're too big. It's just not right, gonna work. You gotta, you gotta use the small ones. And they're very inexpensive. You just slip it right in. It will do an A2, an A6, a five by seven, all of the card um, envelope sizes that you have. And this time, all I'm gonna do is put a detail in. So I want to kind of feel where it is, make sure that I'm on it. I'm going to send it this way just to be sure. And then run it through. And I can go forward and I can go backwards. Pull out my cutting pad. And now look at how cute is this. I, look at how cute is that? I know. And then there's another size that's smaller. I could actually put that one in there or I've got a bigger one. You, I mean, it's just, I could cut this out and layer that on top but it's an easy way to add a little something something 
to, to your envelopes. These little cutting pads are useful, especially if you like to add a little decoration. Now you can put their name and their address and it just makes it so darling. Or you could take out the cut piece and now layer that cut piece that I did there in a different color and put their name and address and then you've got the detail around the outside. You have so many options. And what if you didn't want to do that? What if you just wanted to add some little flower details? Okay, so I'm going to take my cutting pad. And right there and I could take I could take a little flower here and little, well maybe a little flower well maybe just a little flower in the corner okay so I'm gonna take my die I've got my cut pad right down in my corner take my die don't need a bottom cutting pad because your cut pad is literally inside your envelope take my do not cut so I'm gonna move it I'm going to move it this way. I'm going to take my do not cut my cut pad and instead of having it go this way, I'm going to have it go this way. That way I can close my envelope up so it fits through my machine. Oh yeah, better. And send it on through. but that's okay and then I could put a backing in there it's a little bit too tight on my corner but you get the idea and then you could put a little sticker of bling in there I mean it's anything you wanted to do but it requires these little inexpensive cutting pads who would have thought you could do so much with them oh my gosh and yes Everything I've shown you, with the exception of the precision base plate, will go through your plus machine. It will go through um, your, oh, it's heavy. I hate to bring this on over. It's just big and bulky. Okay, so this is the express machine. And it does work off of and you just send everything on through. No more cranking. That's the speed it goes, and then it's done. It goes back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. So if you have arthritis or you have problems with your hands, this may be the way to go. And it comes with your two cutting pads. It comes with the solo shim and the extended so nothing hinged this is like the new one that's going to come with the with the new Sizzix Big Shot machines shows you exactly what to do here you only have two choices that's even better <laughs> and it will run everything through for you and we've got it at a price that's amazing truly amazing and then we have the plus machine and again this guy's a kind of a beast it is an eight inch machine, big, lots of room. The platforms for it are also big. They have to be, it's a big machine. Everything you need is gonna come with it. However, you may find yourself not necessarily using the big platforms with it because you also, if this is the machine you're gonna want, then I would totally recommend must have a, a standard multi-purpose platform. If you're going to get this, you should have this because when you're doing your smaller dies, this is going to go through easy peasy. You don't have that big cumbersome um, set of platforms to work with. Will your magnetic platform go through? Easy peasy. So if you're going to get a plus machine, which is a great machine, I highly recommend 
one or both of the standards so that when you're doing something this small, you're not having to work with something um, this big for something this small. It's big, really big. So the only thing you don't want to use with your plus machine is a precision base plate. It doesn't need it. The pressure in the roller is completely different and you will be fine without it. Okay, I know that there's more to show. I'm sure of that. Um, I didn't get into the squishy and the knock knock because I use a squishy and a knock knock all the time, but we will have them on sale. And again, if you're watching this in the year 2021, chances are, <laughs> chances are um, the dies are gone, but the material is still good. I want to show you, uh, let's show you some of the product really quick, the tools that I used. So here's the dimensional cutting pad. Here is the precision base plate that I used. Here is the standard multi-purpose cutting platform, which I've been using all day long. Here is the magnetic cutting platform. Ooh. Oh, magnet. Well, they've got it. I suppose I could open it. There we go. Help if I had it on the right side. Magnetic platform. Okay, magnetic platform. If you have a pacemaker, this is not the platform for you. If you have a pacemaker, you wanna, you don't, I mean, it's, you, yeah. If you have a pacemaker, they put a warning here about a pacemaker. So if you have a pacemaker, avoid the magnetic. It's not good for your pacemaker. But if you don't, it's lovely. It's a wonderful tool. Then we have some of the cutting plates and they have cutting plates in, gold glitter and clear. These are the clear ones. And you're going to need multiples of these. They will eventually run out. Honestly, they will. I'm so sorry, but they will. <laughs> then we have the brush tool, which I really didn't use at all, but it's a way to get your brushes, your stuff out. Then we have the release sheets that I used. Great release sheets, easy peasy. And we have the small little cutting pads that I used. Those will all be on sale. And we have the shuttle. If you have movers and shapers and you want to use them, again, my recommendation is to get a die that has them and use the die so you get a twofer. But if you do have them, remember not to throw this little piece away. It's important. All right, so I have just a few samples to show you. The girls, they did their best working with the um, with the memory box dies that we have on sale, just in case you're not a Big Shot user at all. We've got lovely memory box on sale. Super, super cute. I know this was really, really long, but it is meant to be a class. And I guess the way I think about it is if you were paying for a class, how much would you pay to sit and do all of this and learn all of this? This isn't meant to be a demo. This is meant to teach you. And I get, I do get some feedback that my classes are too long. And I agree, if they were a demo, these would be too long, but they're not. It's a class and it's meant to show you what more you could do and show you that you have options with what you already have. And sometimes the latest and the greatest, look at, isn't that so cute? She made a flower out of those. Those hearts are the same as these. Just made a flower out of it. Super cute. And I've got this one here, which pops up using that beautiful dimensional just gives you so much to do. And this one, I don't know if I said anything, this one is doubled. So we doubled it to give you even more dimension. Darling, right? 
and here look at how fun are these in the colors with the um, find it glitter paper and then the girls did do oh look at this one I almost missed this one oh my goodness gracious how cute is that the girls did do some layouts for you so you could see how cute they are look at all the layering that they did it's just darling so cute and then here again dimensional look at they pop and we used my must-haves for all the frames all right I know two hours is a lot of time I get that and I appreciate you staying with me did I show this one super cute right okay I oh and here's the some of the glitter paper smooth as silk find it oh my gosh if you like glitter paper you are gonna love this and then my simply defined chocolate and or magic and chocolate which is what I did the sanding with to do these all right so again I know it was long I'm gonna tilt on up I know I didn't get to everything I wanted to which is why my class runs about six hours when I do be a die cut diva because it's hands-on and you learn and you cut and you do we make nothing but by the time you leave you have got such a strong foundation on die cutting and what you can do with what you already have so this has only been two hours and I know two hours is a long time for a YouTube I understand and maybe you had to watch it in chunks but hopefully it has given you a new insight on some of the things that have come out for the big shot machine that will just utilize what you already have or inspire you to take the plunge and try and get into crafting there is no wrong you can do this all right where are you going to find all of these products i don't know that you're going to find the dyes so you're going to find what you find scrapbookingmadesimple.com is where you're going to find it scrapbookingmadesimple.com and maybe i'll see you on the next do's and don'ts in the 2021 2022 <laughs> who knows what will be in die cutting by that time so it's been great having you thank you so much for staying with me post your comment to be a winner winner chicken dinner because i'm sure we're probably going to be given big shot machines away <laughs> uh-huh big shot machines so post your comment and goodbye everybody stacy scrapbookingmadesimple.com bye